Uh, this is from psychologytoday.com. Uh, it's by Lisa Firestone, PhD, Compassion Matters, Self-Help. The unselfish act of prioritizing yourself. Taking care of ourselves and doing what we love is not selfish. This is posted the 17th of August, August 17th, 2017. Most of us are taught from an early age that being selfless is a good thing. And there are many proven benefits of altruism to both our mental and physical well-being. However, sometimes the messaging we receive to be given of ourselves to push ourselves to the limit, be productive and forego our needs can be taken to an extreme. In our everyday lives, if we're not attuned to who we are and what we want, we can start to make sacrifices that don't just hurt or limit us, but actually negatively impact those we care for. Socrates gave two injunctions, care for oneself and know oneself. He and other ancient, my apologies for not saying this right, E-T-H-I-C-I-S-T-S, Echnetists, Echnetists, I, I believe it's Echnetists, I, I, I may be wrong. Understand that caring for ourselves is to exhibit an attitude not only toward ourselves but also towards others and the world. To attend to our own thoughts and attitudes and self-reflection and meditation and to engage in ascetic practices aimed at realizing an ideal state of being, retaining a certain regard for ourselves and engaging in self-compassion and self-care are actually fundamental to creating a good life for ourselves and the people who matter most to us. Here's why. One. When we feel depleted, we have nothing to give. When we fill our time with responsibilities and constantly prioritize the needs of others over our own, we can drain ourselves of energy and desire. We've all experienced the, dif the difference between giving from a feeling of having something to offer, happily getting our kids ready, helping a colleague at work, cooking a meal for a partner, doing a favour for a friend, and making ourselves do this, these same activities because we should. The task remains the same, but our attitude shifts, largely based on our attitude towards ourselves. If we are kind to ourselves and considerate of our own needs, we are more likely to show up fully for the people to whom we extend ourselves. Otherwise, we may be going through the motions, but not engage in a way in which everyone benefits, i.e. our kids feel nurtured, our job feels rewarded, our partner feels seen, and our friends feel cared for. Two. Doing what we love recharges us. When we, are lift, when we are lift up and excited, we have more energy and positivity to offer the people around us. The time a parent takes off for a late night or an employee uses to rest instead of walking. instead of working at all hours, it's not self-centered. Just because it feels good to us doesn't mean it denies others. In fact, by tending to our own needs and practicing good self-care, we alter the very quality of how we relate to others. Our families, friends and co-workers get to experience us at, as the best and fullest version of ourselves, happy and present. Three. We lose our real selves in the do, do, do mentality. I know many parents who go above and beyond for their kids on a practical level. They literally pack every minute of their day into being chefs, 
chauffeurs, coaches, and cleanup crews for the kids. I also know people in relationships who focus on doing everything they can think of for their romantic partner. However, when we fall into a cycle of go, 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 we often tally up achievements that we use to prove our worth, but really stop to experience what makes our hard work worth it to us. We may sacrifice our own interests altogether, or stop enjoying personal connections that make us feel like ourselves. In doing so, we give aspects of ourselves, that the, but the people close to us also miss out on really knowing us. Four, we can join others when we don't get our own needs met. One of the best, best pieces of advice my colleague Pat Love gives to parents, this is the person who written the article, who knows the person named Pat Love, is to get their children needs met by other adults. Is to get their adults needs met by other adults. When parents centered their entire lives around their kids in an effort to be selfless, they put a lot of pressure on their kids to fulfill their lives and meet their needs. It's much better for kids to witness their parents as full and, and fulfilled people in and of themselves. Therefore, experience their parents' example and not just their devotion. It is true that in all our relationships, if we don't practice self-care and find healthy ways to meet our needs as individuals, we tend to have less energy, complain more, drag our feet, feel more resentful, and criticize ourselves and others all of which can be draining to all the people we are seeking to benefit by setting aside our own wants and needs. 5. We lose ourselves to our, to our critical inner voice. When we are preoccupied by the drive to be productive or helpful, it's very good to look at what's pushing us. Are we doing what we do because it makes us or the people we care about happy? Or are we driven by something else? Many of us have inner critic that tells us we have to achieve certain objectives to be susceptible or worthy. This harsh internal coach tends to attack us from all angles and reinforce the idea that anything we do for ourselves is selfish. When we are listening to this voice, it's easy to lose track of what really is going on around us. Are we living our lives the way we want? Are we really doing justice to the people around us by being present and feeling good? The critical inner voice is a huge distraction that affects our good, uh, affects our mood and behaviour. It can often be at the helm of our unrealistic desire to be perfect and always put others first. 6. We fail to practice self-compassion. One risk of being lost in the things we should be doing for others is that we stop fearing for ourselves. To no surprise, research has shown that being kind to ourselves and practicing self-compassion improves our well-being. It also benefits the people around us. Researcher Kristen, ne Christy, Kristen Neff has argued that having a kind attitude to to toward ourselves actually makes us better able to look at our mistakes and make real changes. In, a diff in addition to self-kindness, she described two other key elements to self-compassion. Mindfulness, which involves learning to accept our thoughts and feelings without over-identifying and being overcome by them, and a sense of our common humanity, which means not seeing ourselves as isolated or different than our struggles. Each of these three elements is important to practice because they help us stay attuned to ourselves, who we are and what we need while judging ourselves too harshly or feeling unworthy or different from everyone else. If we can take time to practice self-compassion, we can feel more comfortable being ourselves and extend this attitude to others. 7. Our stress hurts us and those close to us. 
are fair to stop and check in with ourselves and make time for the things that are meaningful to us can increase our stress. Fulfilling our lives with responsibilities can generate a cycle in which being stressed feels like the norm. As a society, we are unapologetic about our stress levels, even wearing them like a badge of honor proving our value. However, stress takes a serious toll on our mental and physical health. These effects often catch up with us and prevent us from enjoying our lives not to mention affecting how we relate to others, often leading to more conflict, tension, and acting out in our relationships. Eight, driving ourselves can impair our performance. Research by the Energy Project recently found that workers who didn't practice good self-care, like getting enough sleep, are often have trouble focusing on one thing and are easily distracted. Their findings is led by Project C or Tony Swartz to conclude if you do not put your needs first then ultimately you will not be able to perform well and show up for others consistently and happily. Take care of ourselves doesn't just make our personal lives better but also makes us into stronger assets at work. For many of us there are good lessons to be learned about being generous and giving of ourselves. However, when we lose touch with the grand passions and tiny quirks that make us who we are, we diminish the quality of our lives. It's all too easy to categorize certain pursuits as selfish rather than fighting to maintain the things that make us come alive. However, when we do make time for our wants and needs, we are more alive to the world around us, more available and more given of our fullest selves. In effect, we are the least selfish while we are still honoring our sense of self.